and welcome. The saga of Lucifer begins with the three-issue miniseries, The Morning Star Option, and then continues through all 75 issues of the character's solo series. Much like its spiritual predecessor, Sandman, Lucifer is one continuous overall story. While Lucifer is a spin-off resulting from the popularity of Sandman, and it utilizes the characters established in that story, Lucifer is quite certainly its own, unique series. Every arc builds on the prior arc, and the cast of characters all contribute, to various degrees, to the conclusion of the series. Or, more accurately, everyone is a piece of the plan that gets Lucifer to the resolution he desires to achieve. The series was entirely written by Mike Carey, with artwork primarily provided by Peter Gross, Ryan Kelly, and Dean Ormston. Like most Vertigo Comics titles, one creative team provides a consistency that holds the series together. There were very few problems over the course of the series. In the beginning, the original art team quit after three issues because the artist disliked the work done by the inker. And as Carey freely admits in interviews, he tried too hard to be Neil Gaiman in that first arc. By the fourth issue he had found his own voice, there was a new art team, and the series proceeded smoothly to its conclusion. Initially, Lucifer was given a three-issue miniseries, The Morning Star Option. This established what would become the premise of the 75-issue series that would debut a year later. That premise being, God asks Lucifer to intervene on his behalf and to clean up an issue he cannot. Lucifer accepts this task and, in exchange, he demands to be given a letter of passage. This is the ultimate get-out-of-jail-for-free card. It will allow Lucifer to escape the universe built by his absent, enigmatic father. However, as Lucifer would learn very early on, this letter of passage is a one-time usage, one-way ticket into the empty void outside of the universe. So, while Lucifer has what he demanded in exchange for his services, it's also a trap leading to complete nothingness. As one might imagine, this knowledge doesn't sit well with Lucifer. In simple terms, Lucifer uses the letter to open a gateway into the empty void. Then he binds that gateway to reality so it remains open. This binding also has a secondary effect. Any attempt to close the gateway will destroy the whole of reality. While various factions attempt to gain control of this gateway, including the entire host of heaven, Lucifer creates his own universe. Once the gateway is secured and a new universe is created, Lucifer allows the misfits of God's creation to populate this new universe. However, Lucifer has one command that everyone must follow in order to gain entry. Worship no one, including himself. From there, Lucifer deals with the challenges to his authority. This eventually leads to an all-out war that comes to a very definitive conclusion. This is a series best read in bulk. Fortunately, most story arcs are only three or four issues long, which defies the current trend of six issues for an arc. There is a fair amount of characterization established, even for moderately minor but pivotal characters. But this approach doesn't feel like narrative padding. It's very lean writing, and it's consistently on point. The stories generally have two overlapping and complementary narrative threads. One is an intimate, character-based point of view, the second is the events occurring in the story, which the character may have a passive role within. Again, this is a very well done technique that moves the story forward while giving one insight into the characters that contribute to the plot. The only main character that doesn't have a story told from their point of view is Lucifer. The quality of the characterization is so distinct that an internal monologue from the protagonist's point of view is simply unnecessary. All we need to know about the lead character is learned through his interactions with others. As a character, Lucifer is amazingly consistent and focused. He's utterly fleshed out and one is given his unique perspective concerning the nature of existence and those that exist. He feels both distant and arrogant, and he only ever gets involved in the plot when it suits his purposes. Otherwise, he is somewhat absent from the series, letting other characters drive the story forward. It's not like he doesn't regularly appear, but there are a few arcs where Lucifer isn't the focus of the narrative. However, that makes character sense. Lucifer should indirectly set events in motion. Then he should sit back and watch, only intervening to make sure his overall plan stays on course. He's a grand manipulator, not someone who micromanages the minor details. That would be beneath him, and a waste of his attention. Almost in defiance of expectation, Lucifer does not lie. He may occasionally misdirect attention from his immediate goal, but he doesn't do this with blatant untruths. 
He is very well-mannered, and he expects the same consideration in turn. When he doesn't receive that level of respect, he is contemptuous and vengeful. He is dismissive of those that are of no use to him, and speaks plainly to those that do. Throughout the series, Lucifer is focused on one goal, and that goal is to live an existence where he can truly claim he has free will. Yes, it's a simple goal to express, but it's one that's exceptionally difficult to achieve with any true certainty, especially if one exists in a universe ruled by an omniscient overlord. Even if one lives their life following their goals, believing and acting like they're outside the influence of others, and even if one has the power to ensure that others cannot force them into circumstances beyond their control, one still can't claim they aren't following the subtle whims of their overlord. So, despite Lucifer's appearance of complete autonomy, while he exists in this universe, he can't be assured that he actually has the autonomy he requires. It's this overall goal that humanizes an otherwise arrogant and seemingly ruthless character. After all, it's hard not to empathize with someone who simply wants to live a life of true freedom. However, it is difficult to overlook the one justifiable flaw to the entire series. It's a soft flaw, one that Lucifer doesn't acknowledge outright, but it's one that does explain, to a degree, his unflinching commitment to his overall goal. That flaw is, in the first three-issue arc, Lucifer has his future foretold by a pack of living tarot cards. He does this in order to determine whether God has a hidden agenda concerning the letter of passage he received from him. While this is a clever device to announce to the readers that the series has an overall direction, it also indicates that Lucifer's actions are predestined. That is, God does have a plan, and Lucifer's quest for true free will may be a part of that plan. No matter what the outcome, whether it's beneficial to Lucifer or not, it is arrived at due to the plan of God. Again, it feels like a logical flaw, but it's actually a subtle way to underscore Lucifer's frustration concerning the certainty of predestination. In recent years, there have been two follow-up Lucifer series. The first follow-up, in 2016, was an obvious effort to capitalize on the TV series that was vaguely based on the Lucifer character. The 19-issue series was mostly written by Holly Black, who is a popular young adult writer. And, well, a character of Lucifer's nature may have been outside of her particular skill set, because Lucifer is terribly mischaracterized. He jokes around, accepts the weak premise presented to him, and he has very little believable motivation to actually participate in the plot. Quite honestly, it's an embarrassingly simplistic portrayal that bears no relation to the previously established complex character. Furthermore, this second series acknowledges the events and characters established in the first series, so it is a direct sequel intended to maintain the established continuity. But it contradicts these details because, presumably, they are inconvenient. The second new iteration ties into the Sandman Universe titles launched in 2018. It appears to be a reboot of the Lucifer concept, as established by Neil Gaiman, and its early direction is somewhat oblique. In the end, Lucifer, the original series, is an overlooked high-concept story with an ending that is very satisfying. It's also told in an organic manner, and it reads like a story unfolding, rather than a story being told. And that's an element that makes all the difference. That's it for today. Like, share, subscribe, and comment, and I will talk at you later. Until next time.